really weird murders that you've probably never heard of, part one. So this is Belle Gunnis. She was born in Norway in 1859 and was an active serial killer in America from 1884 until 1908. Gunnis is thought to have killed at least 14 people, most of those being men who she'd enticed to her farm with the promise of marriage, but a lot of sources say that she may have killed up to 40. She'd lure the men to her farm, get them to marry her, take out a life insurance policy, and then have them die by accident. She'd also take out life insurance policies on her own children, and then they'd disappear as well. It took years for the insurance companies to work out what Gunnis was doing, and they didn't work it out until close to her death in 1908, when she died in a house fire. In the debris of the house fire, they found Belle Gunnis's body headless, and they also found the bodies buried in the backyard of all of her victims. But the post-mortem of Belle's body declared it wasn't actually hers, and to this day she's never been found. Here is the story of the Girl Scout murders. Warning, it's very disturbing and very sad. In the summer of 1977, three Girl Scouts, Lori, Michelle, and Doris, were staying at an Oklahoma campsite. The camp counselor was going through their things when she found a note that was pretty disturbing. Whoever wrote it promised to murder three girls at the campsite, but the camp counselor didn't take it seriously since everybody was telling ghost stories and all that. She thought it was no more than a prank, so she didn't do anything about it, and she would soon come to regret that decision. Two months after she finds that note, on June 13th, early in the morning, the three girls' bodies were found murdered and raped. All three of their bodies were found outside in their sleeping bags on the trail that led to the camp showers. The only thing that the murderer left behind was a bloody footprint and a red flashlight. The prime suspect in this case was Jean Leroy Hart. He was actually raised about a mile away from the camp and at the time of the murders he was an escaped convict. He had escaped from prison where he had been serving time for burglary, kidnapping, and rape. So... But, due to lack of evidence, the jury acquitted him. And if you don't know what that means, they let him go. Due to lack of evidence. And the Oklahoma police consider this crime solved. So, nobody actually knows if Jean Leroy Hart was responsible for this murder. It still is technically an unsolved crime, even though the Oklahoma police say that it has been solved, but... All we know is that the girl's killer never saw justice. Let me know what you guys think about this case in the comments. Do you think he did it? Moral of the story, if you ever see a note like that or something, make sure to ask the person about it or check in with them. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Four teenagers were murdered in this nail salon. Well, technically it used to be a yogurt shop, and yes, this was a crime scene from the infamous Austin yogurt shop murders. These four girls pictured on this billboard that was up around Austin, Texas back in the 90s were murdered right there in that shop. And the way that they were killed was extremely gruesome. What's insane is nobody is in prison for those crimes today. Four people were tried for the crimes, but they were ultimately all released. And nowadays, the yogurt shop is a nail salon where, yes, you can visit. If you want to learn more about this crime, go listen to my podcast, Murder in America. The link is in my bio. We covered this case in episode one, the Austin yogurt shop murders. These two brothers murdered five out of their seven other family members. This massacre took place in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma in 2015 in the Bever family home, pictured right here. Michael Bever, pictured here, and his older brother Robert Bever, who was the ringleader of the two, were obsessed with researching serial killers and horror movies. And in 2015, they decided to create their own. These two wanted to have more victims than any other killer in United States history. So they decided to begin by slaughtering their family. And even though they failed their mission and left two family members alive, they slaughtered five others, including both of their parents. And the 911 call made by one of their siblings in the middle of this killing spree is chilling. And you won't believe how these two killed their family members. It's brutal. If you want to hear the full story of what happened that night in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, listen to my podcast, Murder in America. It's the newest episode, The Bever Brother Family Massacre. The link is in my bio. You can listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts for free.